Welcome to the Random City Podcast. Chester Copperpot! He was a pro! He never made it this far! A competitor. He was very good. Are you telling me you built a time machine? Out of a DeLorean? Back off, man. I'm a scientist. Just listen to the old pork chop express. Take his advice on a dark and stormy night. The person is smart. People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals, and you know it. When Godzilla's coming, y'all be tripping. Where did you come from? From your blood. I'm Groot. You will be. You underestimate my power. He's gonna be the third scariest thing on that train. These guys come from legend. They're basically gods. There's only one god, man, and I'm pretty sure he doesn't dress like that. Welcome back to the Random City Podcast. It's me, Jimmy and Georgia, back once again, as I like to say. And it is time to get random once again. It's been a while. It's been nearly one year since the last episode of the Random City Podcast. You can check us out on all sorts of pod catchers these days. With a new one or two actually soon to come, apparently. But with more details on those as time moves on and things are permitted to be talked about but yeah you can find us on itunes slash apple podcast spotify iheart radio the google play store but i think that's actually going away i think that's becoming youtube music so maybe we'll be on youtube music uh, or something i don't know uh, there's rss feed and of course our website randomcitypodcast.com so lots of different ways to find more episodes more information about the show because this show this will be going out to youtube as well as the audio version on the podcast apps out there so anyway we're back it's been the first time in a long time one of the things that has clearly changed our world has changed things were lost that should not have been forgotten yes i'm quoting lord of the rings here yes things have definitely changed the past six months or so so we're state of the world with the global health crisis that we've had going on different mandates different regulations different lockdowns uh just been a strange year like we all have commented on countless times thus far with the memes and such but yeah we're still hanging in there we're still making the random city podcast here Uh, one of the things i did in a little bit of our downtime our more or less quarantine but not exactly (laughs) I started playing NBA 2K on the on the X on the Xbox, not on the Xbox. NBA 2K on the PlayStation 4. Like last summer, right before 2K20 came out, 2K19 was like three bucks. I'm like, well, for three dollars, I will have to pick this up. I didn't really play it. I think I played it once or twice, like a year ago, or whatever. But during lockdown, I was like, oh yeah, basketball. I wouldn't mind playing some basketball. And so I started playing a few games. Picked up with the Golden State Warriors because they're one of the ones I've watched. At least a little bit of the past few years. I remember watching them. I think it was defeat LeBron in the finals, like in the final game or something. I don't know. I've, I've, I catch sports here and there the last decade or more. I haven't really just been into sports that much. I got, I watched the Falcons lose the Super Bowl, for an example, but I hadn't seen much NFL since then or really before that for a while. But anyway, so I was familiar with the Golden State. I knew who Clay Thompson was. I knew who Steph Curry was. I knew who Kevin Durant was. Granted, Kevin Durant's not, no longer on that team. But anyway, I, I started playing with the team. It was fun. And I was like, yeah, I, I used to love basketball. Like back in the 90s, throughout the early 2000s, this was my favorite sport. You had, you know, Michael Jordan primarily and, you know, and the other, Scottie Pippen. There was tons of, of awesome players back then. Uh, whether they be young or old at the time, someone young like Shaq in the 90s or his his running mate there for a while. Penny Hardaway was one of my favorites. You know, Charles Barkley, Patrick Ewing, Carl Malone, John Stockton. There's, there's a plethora. David Robinson, all these great players. Tim Duncan. But anyway, after there was a, uh, a strike, I think, in 99. I didn't really watch much. And Jordan came back and played with the Wizards for a little bit. And I watched them some at that point but i really haven't really paid attention to basketball since jordan retired the third time and uh, so it's been interesting in the past few months after after playing the game some watching some youtube videos trying to kind of get reacclimated to the state of the sport because it's been so long there were some players i knew who they were still like carmelo anthony's still around he's playing in the bubble obviously lebron people know who lebron is if you not even if you're not a sports fan there are some others but most of the people I was familiar with are no longer playing. Like Vince Carter retired during all this stuff. He was one of the ones I was definitely familiar with prior to all this. But anyway, it's been interesting learning who these people are, how great a lot of these people really are. There's a couple young guys in their early 20s that are just phenomenal right now. Luca down in Dallas, Giannis up in Milwaukee. 
those guys are phenomenal. Like anyway, but it's been fun kind of getting back into basketball. And as the bubble restarted, I have been checking out the bubble games. Not like I haven't. I don't know if I've watched an entire game because they. I mean, honestly, most of these games haven't meant much yet. They're just like regular season games until um, another five days or so. Then the playoffs will start. But it's been fun catching up on stuff and like oh yeah yeah jj reddick's still playing how about that (laughs) stuff like that it's been fun getting back in there but yeah with the golden state warriors i went through my season and i won the championship wept through the playoffs so that was fun but anyway yeah it's been fun getting back into basketball been a long time another hobby or whatever you want to call it i picked up during this whole lockdown stuff earlier this year uh for i think seven or eight weeks in a row i edited skill start classes for my wife she's a watercolor artist she does fantastic work and she has now with the well the two of us her doing the the artwork things and me doing the editing we've uploaded 11 skillshare classes to her profile there on skillshare she has uh, close to 200 followers i think like 800 students or something lots of people have checked out her classes lots of dog cat stuff if you're interested in watercolor painting animals check her out there there's a link you can get to the quickest way would be going to skillshare.randomcitypodcast.com and that'll take you directly where you can get two free months of premium membership of skillshare if you're not already a member and if you are a member find my wife mary evelyn on there and find some of her watercolor classes if you're interested she has one for a butterfly one for a bird several different breeds of dogs uh, one on dog eyes one on dog noses one on cat eyes and Oh, and one on a pumpkin. So lots of stuff. Another class coming fairly soon, probably, once she gets a few projects wrapped up. So that was a fun you know, use of time during time where we couldn't get out and do much. So that was cool. Another thing we found during our kind of uh, downtime earlier this year, we started watching a show on Amazon Prime, which currently is no longer available on Amazon Prime, but you can still watch it on Amazon through one of their other services, but there's ads now, so that's kind of lame. There's a show called Dead Zone. came out like 20 years ago at this point, early 2000s. has Michael Anthony Hall, a kid from all the 80s movies like 16 Candles and Weird Science, uh, National Lampoon's Vacation, lots of stuff in the 80s. He plays John Smith, a psychic, after a uh, car crash, and he can see the future and the past and all sorts of different things. And at one point in the show, I was honestly getting a little bored with the repetitive nature of, of a couple of things. But we are currently on the last episode of season five, and that season five was excellent. Like, I, I don't know. I really enjoyed how they've, I guess, progressed. And one of the things I think is interesting about Dead Zone is kind of like X-Files in a way to me. There are certain episodes that are just like your standard case or he's helping someone who's been kidnapped or whatever. But then there's certain episodes that are more like the mythology of the show. Again, kind of like the X-Files. And those episodes are the ones I like the most. You know, having a, a theme going over multiple seasons. I think it goes back to season two all the way through season six, apparently. Of, you know, some impending something. And he's trying to figure out how to prevent that something from happening. Which is pretty neat. And they have, have some interesting things going on with that. Yeah, I'm looking forward to see how it all wraps up. I really have no idea exactly. I mean, I assume he saves everybody because, you know, that's how people do on TV shows. They save the day. So I guess we'll see. It's a pretty good show. It kind of reminds me of Smallville in a way sometimes, just the way the characters are. I mean, the acting is pretty good most of the time. Sometimes not fantastic depending on, you know, the specific episodes and whatnot. And it's one of those shows definitely if people would communicate more, things could be solved more quickly. But I think that's the case with most television shows. It seems people don't really communicate very well. And also, I mean, as I'm talking about random things that I've been kind of picking up over the past few weeks and months, uh, another thing I've been trying to get into as far as, like I mentioned, video editing earlier, um, I've been slowly kind of transitioning over into the Adobe Premiere Pro for videos, just so you can do a few more things than what I've been using. The software I have is kind of old. I don't know. I like for programs to be intuitive and to work like other programs. And that sometimes happens, sometimes doesn't. Adobe Premiere isn't too too crazy. It's fairly straightforward compared to other video editors that I've used. Uh, I've been getting into Illustrator and InDesign a little bit. I don't like how Illustrator looks in a lot of ways like Photoshop, but does not act or respond like Photoshop. That gets frustrating sometimes. 
Um, InDesign has been fine. Um, a little bit I've played around with it. I'm sure it's more powerful than Publisher, but just on first glance, that's what it reminds me of. I've created some little cute things in Illustrator. Like our, I made our dog a little two-dimensional flat puppy. And a few, you know, trees and potted plants and a little room. Just little things just to kind of play around with how it works. So that's been sort of interesting. I don't know, it's just weird to think how, again, how different the world is. You know, there aren't new movies really to check out. I mean, occasionally something will drop on video on demand. Like I bought the Scooby movie, the Scoob, when it came out. And it was pretty good. I guess I can talk about that for a minute. It was okay. It was a Hanna-Barbera movie. It really wasn't a Scoob or a Scooby movie. Like when it comes right down to it, it wasn't a typical Scooby mystery solving situation. It was less introduced characters from this Hanna-Barbera world to an audience that probably doesn't know who they are. That will be my guess anyway. Like there, there was a lot of them, a lot of Easter eggs, a lot of posters, a lot of things throughout the movie referencing um, creators and uh, characters and different shows and things. Uh, and yeah, it was, it was pretty good. If you're going into it expecting a, ge- a, a general Scooby movie, not so much, but I don't know. I mean, it depends on where they go, if they go anywhere with this. Like, if they're trying to make some sort of Hanna-Barbera cinematic universe, okay, maybe. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> I like I like Scooby. I like the original show. I like Mystery Incorporated. It's probably still my favorite of all those iterations. Uh, the newest one, the Scooby-Doo and Guess Who, isn't too bad. I've seen, I've seen probably half the first season of that. It was pretty good. You know, some of the little straight to DVD or straight to whatever nowadays digital movies are okay. I still really like Zombie Island. That's probably my favorite of all those, even though some of the voices aren't quite the normal voices I'm used to. Because my like Matthew Lillard's primarily been doing Shaggy since those um, early 2000 movies, and so it's kind of interesting. I think uh, what is it? Billy, Billy, somebody. He's a popular voice actor. I think is, is the guy doing Shaggy in that particular movie. And it, that 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 now going back to it kind of throws me off a little bit. But I do enjoy that one. And there's been some pretty good Scooby movies here and there uh, over the past few years. I don't know. The quality of those varies pretty wildly. Just in the last few months, I've watched probably six or seven of those. Like I watched Scooby Doo, Moon Monster Madness. Scooby-Doo and Kiss Rock and Roll Mystery, Scooby-Doo and WWE Curse of the Speed Demon, Scooby-Doo Batman Brave and the Bold. Batman and Brave and the Bold is kind of like the Scoob movie. It really wasn't a Scooby episode. It was more about Batman, some Batman mystery, blah, blah, blah. Same thing with Kiss episode. It was more about Kiss than it was about Scooby. Same thing with the WWE stuff. It was more about WWE stuff than Scooby. Um, there's been a couple of those WWE ones. I like the one, the first one that came out with, uh, I don't forget what that one was called. It had had John Cena in it, I think, if I remember right. The Miz, something like WrestleMania or something or another. I don't know. But yeah, those vary wildly from movie to movie, I guess, depending on who is working on them. But some of those early 2000 movies were pretty fantastic back right around that time, right after Zombie Island. That was, again, kind of the heyday of the Scooby directed DVD movies. But anyway, one other thing that I did uh, was able to finally pick up not too long ago. My wife had been wanting to get it for some time. Was the Ring Fit Adventure for the Nintendo Switch? It had been sold out like so many other electronics during the global health crisis that we've all been dealing with, and uh, it finally popped up online that it was in stock here locally at Target. So we grabbed it online, ordered it, and picked it up. We've both been playing some of the exercise things. We haven't. Neither of us have actually started the actual game like the story mode, but we've both been doing several little, little games, little exercises. We've made a little playlist of games and exercises. That's been pretty interesting. I bought a little bike pedal thing, so that was kind of fun. So I'm trying to do more healthy things. For almost a year now, I've been losing weight and eating better and doing all those kind of things, taking vitamins and supplements and stuff. I don't know. I don't really talk about this stuff much. I don't know. I never do on this side of things. But yeah, I'm, from like three years ago, around this time, I'm down right in the neighborhood of like 110 pounds which is pretty good most of that being or like over half of that being the last less than the last year like the last probably eight and a half months nine months whatever it was been but yeah just started slowly going through the process of, of losing weight and getting more active and 
trying to be more healthy, which is, you know, again, helpful in the midst of a global health crisis. So, <laughs> yay, good for me. So anyway, <laughs> I guess that'll do it for this random episode of the Random City Podcast. Again, I'm Jimmy in Georgia. You can follow me on social media. You can follow the show at Random City on Twitter, at Random City Podcast on Instagram. The show is on Facebook. We don't really do much there, but it's there. Um, we are, again, earlier we mentioned uh, on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio. The, there's a direct RSS feed. We're currently on Google Play Music, but I'm pretty sure that is going away. And pretty soon we'll be on a couple of new platforms that, uh, as far as I'm aware, to this point, I'm not supposed to talk about just yet. But we'll, we'll talk about that once it is there. So give us a follow. Connect with us in one of those ways, and we'd be glad to hear your feedback. And... I guess until next time, everybody stay random and we'll talk to you later. Peace.